A lot of us had dreams as little girls, okay? And the question is, do we throw away our dreams just because we are moms? Some women are fulfilled. I know I have friends who just enjoy being moms, stay-at-home moms, dedicate everything to their kids and their family, and they're happy, they're fulfilled. They don't feel any kind of emptiness inside of them. And on the other hand, there are other people and other women, okay, who in spite of doing things for the kids, the family, being moms, they still have an inner emptiness because they feel like God is calling them to a higher calling, like God wants them to do something more. This reminds me of how I felt before I started doing Empowered for Balance. And I quite remember I was at a place where, you know, I had my twin, I had twins, I had a daughter, I had three kids, I was married, um, I had the degrees, you know, I had everything that I had always wanted and I thought would make me fulfilled. But the only thing is that I had stopped pursuing my dreams and using my God-given talents and abilities because I thought that motherhood was what the ultimate was. Um, deep inside of me, I did not feel fulfilled. And I always had this sense of emptiness. It's like, you know, I was smiling, but inside of me, I always felt empty. Like there was a vacuum, like something wasn't right. I know that I am not alone. I know that there are so many women out there who had dreams, who had you know, things that they were trying to pursue before they became moms. And deep inside of them, in spite of, you know, being maybe full-time moms or even working, they feel like there's a lot more they could be doing. You know, they shouldn't throw away these dreams. If you are the woman out there who, in spite of everything you're doing for your kids and your family, you still feel like there's a lot more that God is calling you to, and I think this video is for you because in this video, I'm going to talk to you about six simple strategies for pursuing your dreams and using your God-given talents as a mom. These are the strategies that I have used that has given me the opportunity to do empowered for balance and, you know, um, help other women out there and coach and come on YouTube and do a podcast and write books. So before we go on, have you subscribed yet? If you haven't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. And hey, if you have subscribed, hit the bell so that anytime we upload new videos and new episodes, you will get a notification. And then that way you don't miss out on anything else. All right. All right. So before I give you my six strategies, I just first of all want to make one thing clear. Okay. God-given dreams and purposes and God-given talents and abilities and visions are divine. And I believe that every single woman has a talent in her that God gave to her. And in as much as we have, we have been fruitful, okay, by being moms, God expects us to still use our talents and our abilities and our God-given, you know, all the things that he's put in us. He wants us to use them, you know, to fulfill our, our destiny and to fulfill what he's calling us to do, all right? So I believe that for some people, they may have the talent of speaking, of writing, of um, acting of you know creative arts some people may have the talent of um doing stuff with their hands you know creating things with their hands creativity um some people may have the talent of um sports all right sports so they are able to do different types of sports you know we all have at least one talent in us and if you don't know yet what your talent is you know, please reach out to me. I'll be happy to work with you to help you identify what your talents is. Okay. So all these God-given talents and abilities are things that I also be a tools that God has put in us that if we develop them, okay, they become great things, assets for us. Some people are even able to monetize them and some people are able to get the inner fulfillment from them. Okay. All right, so number one, all right, the first strategy is get rid of the guilt you feel about your dreams. Yes, that guilt, get rid of it because you are not a bad mom for having those dreams. 
You are not a bad mom for wanting to do more. You are not a bad woman or a bad wife for wanting to use the gifts and the talents that God has given you. You are not a bad woman or a bad mom for wanting to do more and um, do bigger things. You're not a bad mom. So get rid of that guilt. Give yourself a lot of self-compassion. And I always say, this is what the devil always does to us. You know, he gives us that guilt. When we want to do something with our talents, then we are feeling guilty. So on top of that emptiness that you're feeling, you are adding to it that burden of guilt. And it's even making it worse. and even makes that unfulfillment worse. So get rid of that guilt because you're not a bad person. And you're not a bad mom for wanting to do more than just being a mom. You're not a bad mom, all right? So get rid of that guilt. You have that drive in you because God has a purpose for you. God has a purpose for you. He's calling you to do something great. You know, he has a purpose for you. So that dream is in you, not because you're a bad mom or not because um, you're not good a good woman or you're not a good wife. It's in you because God has a purpose for you. And maybe, you know, there's somebody out there that just needs your talent. There's somebody out there that has to benefit from this gift, this calling, this vision, this dream that God has given to you. So you're not a bad person, okay, for having that dream. God expects us to use our talents and our abilities and our gifts to fulfill our purpose here on earth. He expects us to use our talents to expand his kingdom. He expects us to use our talent to bless other people. So if you have that yearning inside of you and you feel like God is calling you to a higher calling and God has something greater than being only a mom, you're not a bad person. So point number one, strategy number one, get rid of that guilt. Don't see yourself and stop seeing yourself as a bad person, as a bad person for having the dreams and the talent and the talents and the vision that you have. No, get rid of it. All right. Number two, second secret to pursuing and using your talents to pursue your dreams is to see motherhood as a transition. What do I mean? A lot of women see motherhood as their destination. So they go to school, they have degrees, and they become moms, and they're like, okay, I'm done. I'm going to be a mom, and that's it, okay? If you feel that's what God is calling you to do, that's fine. If you feel God has bigger plans for you, then see motherhood as a transition. When I say that, what do I mean? It's a transition because you're not going to be a full-time mom forever. Your kids are not going to need your full attention forever, okay? It's only a matter of time. If you have toddlers and you have little kids like I do, the kids are going to start going to school. That frees up a lot of time for you to do things with your dream. After, you know, um, elementary school, they go into middle school, they go into um, high school, junior high school, they go into college. And that is when a lot of women will show up to my coaching and they're like, oh dear, my, my last child just went over to college and now I don't even know what to do because I feel so lonely. Yes, motherhood is a transition. Your kids are going to grow and become adults. And when they become adults, at that point, you come to realize that it was only a transition and not your destination. So whilst you are in the early phase of motherhood, maybe your kids are so little so you feel like there isn't so much you can do with this dream that you feel all this calling or this vision that you feel God is calling you to. What I will tell you is that go ahead and start writing your dreams down. Get a journal, get a notebook, get a vision board. When the ideas come, when the vision comes, when the, 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 um, the inspiration comes, just write them down okay just start writing keep writing as much as you can because as you're going through this transition god will not stop giving you the ideas and the vision is not going to stop coming and the ideas are not going to stop coming but you may not be ready to pursue this dream now but the more you're writing it down the more you're writing down all the inspiration and the things you write down you go back and you pick it up and you can sometimes even polish them more and keep working and planning towards 
what you're going to be doing when it's you feel like the time is right for you to pursue that dream. So write it down. I'll give you an example. I like to use myself as an example. Empowered for Balance. You see Empowered for Balance and I'm doing so many things. And a lot of my friends are like, where did this idea show up for you? We did, you never spoke about it. And these are the people that I just met like two, three years ago. And I tell them, these are all things I wrote down years ago, some of them 10 years ago. And because I have them written down, when I felt the time was right to start pursuing in full force, I had it written down. All I had to do was to go pick things down and just polish them and, you know, tweak them here and there before finally bringing all that, you know, the, the final product out to you. And hence, yeah, even doing some of these videos, right? And it's all dreams that I wrote down years ago. So start writing down your dreams. When the vision comes, when the idea comes, write it down. Because when the time is right, and you're ready to pursue that dream, and you're ready to go in full force, and you feel like now I have time, then you can pick that idea, and you can pick all the plans that you wrote down and run with them. So don't, you know, you not actively working on the dream doesn't mean that you cannot, you know, work on it passively in terms of making the plans towards the dream, okay? So start writing down your dreams and see motherhood as a transition it's just a matter of time all right so the point number three okay see your dream as a seed what do i mean see your, your dream as a seed that you can plant today and start watering it bit by bit by bit okay so you may not be able to pursue your dream full time now you may not be able to do everything that you would expect to do if maybe you had a lot of time for yourself. But how about you start planting that seed? So how about you sow the seed and start working on it a little bit by little and watching it? When I say watching it, what do I mean? How about you start putting five minutes into your dream a day? 10 minutes into your dream a day, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. Ideally, the best would have been to work on your dream, maybe eight to 10 hours a day, full time. But probably that's not possible. But you can actually go ahead and do it five minutes, 20 minutes, 10 minutes here and there. You know, do it bit by bit by bit and make taking baby steps. Because sometimes as women, we want to go with the all or nothing rule where we think that if I'm not pursuing this dream full time, then it's not even worth it at all. But I'll tell you that taking it bit by bit and taking it baby steps and doing a little bit at a time, you know, one day at a time, you know, and um, five minutes at a time, 20 minutes at a time, one hour at a time, you realize that five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day of working on this vision that you have, in five years, you would have moved closer to what the ultimate goal is. So you may not be able to get in full force and do it all now, but how about you take it a little bit at a time, sow that seed, plant it, you know, put it in the ground and water it bit by bit, you know, start putting your things together, start making phone calls, reaching out to people, talking to people, getting more ideas, working on it bit by bit. With time, you realize that you would have made a lot of progress. So yes, take it one minute at a time. See your dream as a seed and sow it and take it one minute at a time. And you know, when you are able to switch your approach and do it a bit at a time without going with the all or nothing rule, you come to realize that there's this inner fulfillment that you have, okay? Because I'm telling you that sometimes we think that going in full force is what's going to fulfill that emptiness that we have. But even spending 15 minutes a day on that thing that fulfills you, on that dream that you believe fulfills you, on that, that thing, that talent, or pursuing that thing that fills you up usually gives you that inner fulfillment, that that goes a long way to take away that emptiness that you're feeling. And when that emptiness is gone, or when you're able to fulfill that part of you that feels empty, you realize that you even enjoy your motherhood more because it doesn't feel like you're marking time, like you're in a rush. Oh, I want this, this phase of my life to be over. You are able to embrace everything, knowing that you can do a bit of the things that make you happy and fulfill you while still being there for the kids. And, you know, while still um, loving the kids and giving them your all, you know, that way 
you're doing two things and you're happy inside of you and you don't feel like um, you're not fulfilled or you're not doing what you think God is calling you to do. All right, so strategy number four, make use of your downtime. And when I talk about making use of your downtime, I'm talking about the little bits and pieces of puzzles of time in the day that you waste on unnecessary things, okay? I remember when I started Empowered for Balance, what I would do is that when the kids go to bed at night, instead of sitting in front of the TV and watching, you know, of course it's fun to watch TV, I would go right in front of my computer and start working. And sometimes I was able to put in two hours of work, three hours of work before I would go to sleep because that was downtime time in my house because I would make sure that I put the kids to bed by 7 p.m. That way I have like two, three hours to work in the evening towards the goal until I go to the place where now I'm able to work full time on Empowered for Balance. So what am I saying here? How about you try to figure out the little bits and pieces of time in your day? It could be five minutes in the morning. It could be 10 minutes in the afternoon. The same way when I talk about self-care, I talk about using downtime, right? You can use at some of that downtime to work towards your goal, you know? So take a little bit at a time and chip away with it. Because the thing is, as moms, sometimes we may not be able to give our all to that dream. But you making good use of our time. And that also time management comes here because, yes, sometimes we're spending time doing things that we think is necessary. But in reality, if we prioritize properly, we can have a lot of time, a lot of the things that waste our time but don't give us fulfillment. We can now give that time towards, you know, the things that we want to do or the things that fulfill us as people or as women, all right? So make good use of your downtime. Point number five, five, point number five, share your dream to a family-focused accountability partner. You know, sometimes when we feel God is calling us to do something or when we have a dream or a vision or something that we are hoping to, you know, achieve, okay? We are scared to talk about it because maybe we feel like, oh, everybody's going to think that I'm a bad mom or I want to abandon my kids and go after this dream. Okay. But there are certain um, people you could talk to who could help you structure yourself or structure your day or structure your, your, your timetable or your schedule so that you are prioritizing the kids and being there for the kids but you still have time for this thing that you feel God wants you to do or this, this talent or this dream or this vision that you have. And this could be a life coach. It could be a life balance strategist like me. It could be um, a friend who is very good with it, who is family focused. Because the thing is, you could still have an accountability partner, but you don't want an accountability partner who will not help you prioritize properly because the kids are still number one you're still little god gave these kids to us and he expects us to take care of them and give them everything that they need right so we don't want to abandon our kids that's not what we want to do here but when you work with a family focus or a kid focused accountability partner this person can help you prioritize the kids manage your time well and still have time for that dream or that vision that you're hoping to pursue So make sure that you're not alienating yourself or you're being lonely about this or you're sticking to yourself and you're letting this guilt overcome you, okay? Make sure that you're speaking to at least a family-focused and child-focused accountability partner who can help you structure yourself so that you can have time for the kids and still have time for this dream, all right? And number six, six, that's the last one is that don't lose focus of your priorities. You know, a lot of times, sometimes when we want to go in and pursue something that we think God is calling us to pursue, or we have dreams and visions and all that, sometimes we tend to lose focus. Now we make that vision more important than the kids. We don't want to do that. Like I said earlier, God gave these kids to us and he expects us to take care of them and make sure that they are well, you know, so we don't want to lose focus of our priority. So as we take care of our 
kids, we can still pursue the dreams and visions that we have. But we want to always realize that the kids come first. Because I would say kids are so vulnerable. And so we don't want to get rid of them. So if it means that probably the ideal thing was to work eight hours a day, and now there's an opportunity for you to work on this vision a couple hours a day, don't go for eight hours if you think that it's going to affect the kids. Probably you can go for four hours part-time until you feel like it's the right time to even go in full-fledged, okay? And then also you also need to realize that if you feel that by pursuing this vision and this dream, the kids are going to be affected and probably it's not the right time. So then you can go back to the early strategy of just doing planning where you're doing a bit at a time. So make sure that every decision, okay, or everything that you do in regards to this dream is not affecting the kids. If you're going to have somebody watch the kids so that you can pursue this dream, make sure that this person is a responsible person. If you're going to um, have a couple meetings or, uh, you know, you're, the kids are not in school and, you know, you need to still pursue this dream, make sure that you're setting things up and you have everything that they need and the kids are fine before you go ahead and take care of the dream. Because you also don't want in, in your bit to get this inner fulfillment, you don't want your kids to be affected because then you're gonna, by doing one good thing, you end up creating a problem and you don't wanna do that, right? So make sure that you are not losing focus of your priorities and you take it one day at a time, okay? All right, so in this short video, I gave you six simple strategies for pursuing your dreams as a mom. The first strategy was that get rid of that guilt that you have about your dream because you're not a bad person for wanting to do more or you're not a bad woman or a bad mom for wanting to pursue your dream or for having a dream or a vision, okay? The second one was see motherhood as a transition and in this transition, it's fine to start what? Prepping towards that dream or that vision that God has for you. Number three is that see your dream as a seed. Okay, you can plant that seed and you can water it by giving it a couple of minutes a day. And by the time you realize within a couple of years, you would have made a lot of progress towards the dream. So the, and the fourth thing is that make use of your downtime. So you need to make sure that you're structuring your day and you're looking for the little loopholes in your day that you're wasting on unnecessary things, the time wasters. Get rid of the time wasters and use that time to pursue, to do something that will move you one step closer to that dream, all right? And then number, number five, number five is that share your dream with an accountability partner. Share your dream with a family focus, a child focus accountability partner. Share your dream with somebody, a life coach, a life balance strategist like me, somebody who can help you structure yourself so you can still prioritize the kids and have time for the kids and still be able to do something towards your dream that makes you fulfilled. And number six is that you don't wanna lose focus of your priorities. As you put all these strategies together, always remember that the kids' safety and the kids' well-being is very important because God gave us these kids and he expects us to take care of them and make sure that they are well, all right? Hey, before I go, I just want to extend a quick invitation to you. You are like me, and deep inside of you, you feel like God is calling you to a higher calling apart from being a mom. You feel like there's more that you should be doing as a mom, and you feel like you're not fulfilled. There's that inner in a yearning inside of you to do a lot more, but you don't even know where to start from. You don't even know how to prioritize yourself. You don't know how to structure yourself. You don't, you're like, I'm a, these strategies are awesome, but I don't even know where to start from. Please go ahead and book a free strategy session with me. And in this session, we're going to talk about what's going on with you, what your challenges are, and if it's a good fit for us to work together. And I'm able to work with you to structure yourself and to prioritize and put yourself together so that you can have that balance and still be able to pursue your dream and you can live a more purposeful and fulfilling life whilst being a good mom and a mom who is not, you know, neglecting her kids. 
while she's pursuing her dreams. So go ahead and book that call by going to www.empoweredforbalance.com slash free session to book that call. And hey, don't forget to follow us on social media at Empowered for Balance. It's all one word on all the platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, um, on YouTube. Um, and then also don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. We are streaming on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many other of the podcast you know, streaming platforms. So don't forget to book that call. Again, my name is Alma Brew, and I'm your live violence strategist and certified wellness coach. Don't forget, and remember that a truly empowered woman lives a balanced life. So as you go on and pursue your dreams, don't forget that it's important to have time for the kids whilst you pursue these dreams. I wish you all the best and take care of yourself. Bye.